Welcome to this edition of Installing a Guest Operating System. My name is Chris Skinner from VMware Education Services, and we're going to take a look in this section about how to build a virtual machine and install a guest operating system, followed by the tool set that VMware provides to enhance the functionality of that virtual machine called VMware Tools. In this slide, you can see the virtual machine hardware represents peripheral devices that can be associated with a virtual machine much in the same way that a physical box can also have support for a multitude of physical devices. In essence, a virtual machine is a software representation of a physical entity. As you can see, we can have parallel ports, serial ports, virtual machines can support audio, access to USB devices, the traditional floppy disk controller, mouse, keyboard, video, so that for the remote capabilities of accessing this virtual machine, we can provide the keyboard functionality and mouse clicks and so forth. In addition to that, you can notice that we have up to 10 network adapters per virtual machine. This would allow you to create a virtual machine that might have the need to connect to multiple different networks perhaps for routing functions, perhaps for intrusion detection systems, and so forth. In addition to that, you can see that we can have four SCSI HBA adapters, each of which can have up to 15 devices associated with it. From a CPU standpoint, each virtual machine, assuming the physical host has the capacity to present it, can have up to 32 processors supporting symmetric multiprocessing, virtual symmetric multiprocessing. Each virtual machine can also support up to a terabyte of RAM, 3D graphics, and IDE controllers for things like floppy disks or CD-ROM drives. In the next section, we're going to take a look at a demonstration of creating a virtual machine, installing a guest operating system into that virtual machine, and then subsequently installing VMware tools, which will enhance its functionality even further. Once again, I'm in the vSphere client connected directly to the vCenter server. Uh, the simple way to create a virtual machine, uh, as a reminder that we talked about before during the navigation, under the Home, Inventory, Virtual Machines and Templates view, we can also navigate to create a virtual machine. Once we have this view, we simply right click. The wizard comes up that allows me to create a new virtual machine. And then I am presented with two options for configuration. I can choose a typical configuration, which would allow me to identify common devices and some of the common configuration options. Uh, a large part of the decisions and a large part of the choices made for this would be predicated on the operating system you've selected to install. Custom gives me a great deal more functionality and it gives me a lot more control about versioning, memory allocations, and so on. So for this demonstration, we're going to choose a typical configuration, click Next. The next thing it will ask me for is, what do I want to call this virtual machine? The name that you provide here, which defaults to new virtual machine, will also ultimately become the name of the guest OS inside of that virtual machine as well. So for example, I'm going to create one called Win2003A. And then it's going to ask me where in the inventory I'd like to create this virtual machine. Uh, since the training data center is the only option available to me, we'll go ahead and install that there. Click Next. Next screen is going to ask me which host in my inventory do I want to create this virtual machine. So I'm given two choices here because my current virtual data center allows me to have two ESX servers in here. For the simplistic state, I'll put it on ESX server number one and click on Next. Now it wants to know where do you want to install this virtual machine's disks. So as we mentioned in the previous version when we talked about thin provisioning and thick provisioning, we choose which data store we want to put this virtual machine on. Uh, this is going to be decided basically on whether or not you want this to be in a shared server environment to support functionality like vMotion and such, or you want to put it on a local data store. If you put it on a local data store, it will only be available to that particular ESX server. In this scenario here, we're going to put it on a shared storage. We'll click on Next. 
And of course, now the next thing is to ask me what type of guest operating system we're going to be putting inside this virtual machine. Uh, you have three choices basically here, Windows, Linux, and Unix. For our demonstration purposes, we're going to be installing a Windows 2003 server. So I simply navigate down into the list till I find that choice and then click on Next. Now one of the reasons why we're being prompted or asked for what version of a guest OS we're being uh, is installing is it makes some it helps to make vCenter provide some decisions about memory allocations, disk storage and so forth. Uh, also memory uh, configuration. The next screen will ask me some networking questions here. Oh, how many network adapters do I want to connect this machine to? What network do I want to create this to? So in the virtual switch configuration here, if you have multiple options or multiple choices, you can choose to select which network you want to put this virtual machine on. We are building this virtual machine to support the production environment. So we're going to go ahead and leave it on, to, on that connection. We also are given some options about what type of network adapter we want to choose here. And depending on the network adapter that you select here, you may have more or less feature enhancements available to it. And lastly, of course, whether or not when this virtual machine comes up, do you want it to be automatically connected to that network and live? So those are all options and choices that you can make about the network connectivity. The next is whether or not you want to, the size of the disk that you want to create and whether or not you want that to be thick provisioned or thin provisioned. Uh, as a quick reminder, the thick provision allocates the space immediately on the storage that you've chosen versus thin provision, which is a grow on demand up to the size of the disk that you define here. So for simplicity purposes, you can see that we have 28 gigabytes available to us. If I were to create a virtual machine with an 8 gigabyte disk or 8 gigabyte C drive, that would take 8 gigabytes of that 28 gig. If that was thick provisioned, that would immediately consume that from that data LUN. If I choose thin provision, I will start off with a minimal size and grow up to the maximum size that I've defined a virtual disk size, which is 8. Click on Next. And we're ready to go at this point. Um, last but not least, I have the ability to also make some additional edits. If I choose to do things like edit some, some of the settings that I've selected or additional settings that I've selected through the process, I can choose to make that change now. We are going to go ahead and click on Finish. And you will see almost instantly we'll have a new virtual machine created in our inventory here. The progress bar at the bottom is indicated that the task is completed. But you may have noticed that during this creation process, we never actually installed a guest into this virtual machine. So the next step that we need to do is we need to mount a virtual CD-ROM to this virtual machine before we power it on so that it can install the guest operating system. So to do that, we simply highlight that virtual machine. Uh, we can choose down here in the main screen here or right click, Edit Virtual Machine Settings. We will give it an opportunity here to connect to the CD-ROM drive. And you're given a number of choices here. Client device is uh, that I want this virtual machine to look for the CD-ROM or DVD on the physical ESX server. I can also choose a different host device. Or I may have an ISO image of this guest operating system stored somewhere out on a shared LUN or a LUN that's making ISOs available for the installation of guest operating systems. In this case, we've created a, a shared locate or there's a uh, lab file location that stores this ISO image that we're going to use. That happens to be on data store one. You'll see my entry here called ISO files. And in this ISO files is my Windows 2003 ISO image that I've created. So I s highlight that ISO image, click OK. And last but not least, before I power on this virtual machine or I commit its change, I want to make sure that I have a connect at power on state defined to this virtual machine. And so that when I power up the virtual machine, I am telling it to look for the existence of an object that's connected to the virtual CD-ROM. In this case, it would be the ISO image. Click OK. Once again, we look at the progress bar at the bottom. We wait for the task to complete. This 
particular virtual machine now has a CD-ROM mounted to it, virtual CD-ROM mounted to it, and simply power up this virtual machine. Once again, I can right click on that virtual machine or I can come up here to the play button and click on that. At this point, the progress bar once again is indicating that it's been powered on. The virtual machine will also indicate that with a little play button on that virtual machine. At this point, we can open up a console window to this VM. And we should see that we now have a virtual machine guest or the CD-ROM installing the Windows setup installation. Okay, as you can see, the Windows 2003 server is now booting up for the first time after the installation is complete. And we see the traditional or standard three finger salute login. Okay, at this mo moment in time, we are now going to log into this virtual machine. Here we'll click on the VM menu. We will choose, whoops, guest. Send control alt delete. And we will see our virtual machine has the Windows logon screen presented to me, at which we can now log into the virtual machine and see the guest boot normally here. It's going through its final personalization. We are done. We are almost finished with this virtual machine. One last thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we configure the display settings as well as install the VMware tools. Now the VMware tools is an enhancement set available for virtual machines to replace some of the standard drivers that are installed from the Windows disk. Uh, if you remember or if you think about it, the Windows Server CD or ISO image that we created from a CD that used to install this guest operating system uses the standard drivers. That would be the standard Windows VGA driver, mouse driver, keyboard driver, and those particular drivers are not optimized for virtualization. So in order to provide better functionality or more enhancement to that, we, in, we need to install VMware tools. And not unlike the CD-ROM that we use to mount the Windows Server CD, we are also going to mount an ISO to the virtual machine to install those tools. And we do that by going into the VM menu, go to Guest, and we do Install slash Upgrade VMware Tools. Click on the OK. We're prompted with a menu here, or with a dialog box here that tells me that these particular drivers that we install in this will increase the performance of the virtual machine. Things like mouse latency, graphics resolutions, enhanced network drivers, and so on. So at this point, we are attaching another ISO image to that virtual machine. And through this process, we'll now see a simple Windows installation of a tool set that will allow me to replace the standard drivers or generic drivers that were part of the Windows CD with VMware virtualized or optimized drivers. Again, it's a fairly straightforward click through Windows traditional menu system. Click on Next. And we're given three options here. We can choose typical, we can do a complete installation, or in the traditional Windows way, we can do custom and pick and choose our features. Uh, for this particular demonstration, we're going to choose a typical installation of the install. So we'll click on Next here again. And last but not least, click on the Install option. Uh, VMware Tools is a very simple, quick installation, shouldn't take any time. Once the installation is completed, then it will prompt us for a reboot of the guest OS. And that's, of course, largely re the reason behind that largely is because we are replacing drivers. And in traditional Windows fashion, drivers are loaded during the boot up process. So since we're replacing some drivers, we'll need to do a final reboot on this guest OS. We now have finish. 
we click OK or finish on this option here. At this point, we're being prompted to restart our guests in order to take those those uh, drivers to become effective. So once again, we're doing a final reboot on this guest OS. And you can see that once again, we're presented with our logon option. We can log into this virtual machine once again. And once the guest comes up, you'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner of the system tray, we have a small icon. Well, we need to change our display settings. Let's go ahead and configure our display settings. And again, the red X is an indication that we had the generic settings before. We can simply click on that red X and it will prompt and say, do you like these settings? If we want to commit those settings within the 15 second window, we click OK and, and we've modified or updated our graphics. Once again, you'll notice down here in the tray, as I hover over the system tray here, we see the VMware tools, and the VMware tools are now fully installed. And they also have their own configuration options in here, which we can take a look at in a future demonstration. That concludes the demonstration of installing the Windows guest operating system into a newly created virtual machine. For more information about vSphere infrastructure, go to VMware Education Services on the web. VMware Education Services provides training in over 500 centers in 60 countries. This is delivered both by VMware Direct as well as our partners authorized training centers. You can take classes in an instructor-led classroom environment. Class can also be delivered remotely via live online. We also have private on-site capability as well as a number of free e-learning modules that are available on our website as well. You can find us online at any of the links listed below.